Zaxby's, indescribably good. Hello, Raider fans, and welcome to the Mo Dixon Show, where tonight we talk about the big victory over South Gwinnett, which Dixon's show was brought to you by Zaxby's with two locations in East Cobb. Well, Mo, congratulations. 1-0. and Great victory on... Undefeated. Undefeated. I can retire now. You are. You could retire as the only undefeated coach in Walton history. There we go. 16-13 to victory. Um, listen, first game of the season. Last week we talked a little bit. You, you kind of sort of knew what you had, but you weren't sure. Jensen kicks the field goal. Defense holds on at the end of the game. You go off the field, get a chance to celebrate. Yeah, we were... Uh, it goes back, I think, last week sort of talked about the screaming situation from the week before. Didn't feel like we got a lot of great work. Um, after the game, uh, going through what we ended up going through, I thought it was a great win. Uh, it's sort of like the game you saw on the weekend, some of the games you saw on the weekends and the big Corky Kale. Right. Um, you know, there was some that went down to the wire, the game at the end there, the 6A game at the end, uh, going into 145 in the morning and 50-something to 48-something back and forth. And even though we didn't have the fireworks of that game, it was still tough. You know, it's tough to come back, you know, uh, in any high school game because yeah. all those games are really seesaw games. And uh, for our kids, right off the bat, again, uh, you know, I can't say it both ways. I, I didn't feel like we, get, we had great work going into that game. And I feel like that game was like our scrimmage game, mm -hmm. not meaning uh, it wasn't a serious game, but it was the same things that you should see in a scrimmage. I felt right. we were a game behind. Right, right. So um, for them to come out there and fight through that, and, uh, you know, we had some things, you know, it looked a little, a little almost got desperate there towards the end, and we, we did some really good things, moving the ball down the field. Josh was, uh, I think he was uh, 10 for 13, yep. with right at almost 200 yards passing in his first game as a starter. And... Um, I thought that we he we felt he we gave him the offensive player of the game, knowing also that everybody's at the game know uh, knows that uh, KK is going to carry the he's going to be our workhorse, right? And uh, I'd say you'll probably as the season's over you could probably pick him for player of the game every game, yep. and uh, we know we can rely on him, and um, you know we we did some things we just had penalties and things on the sideline you know we got to get fixed up and. Uh, and, you know, we feel we're a little bit thin right now. By midseason, we think we'll, uh, after our sophomores get a little bit older and, and our freshmen get a little bit older. But uh, for them to come back like that and kick, and the way we did with the big kick, and, uh, and I thought we were, we were, we looked our best when we looked our best, but we were really, uh, the whole time, we never, nobody were, was ever freaking out. Uh, I got to be honest, I think we were more than the kids were. And uh, it was just, you know, uh, you want them to be successful. Yeah. It's the first game, and we know we're going to get much better. You, but, got, you got better, <clears throat> though, between the first half and the second half. I mean, I, I think so. It, it, it was noticeable, and we were talking a little bit as we were doing the game, Coach, that early in the game you could tell that the guys were just thinking a lot. Mm -hmm. and, and, and as the game went on, particularly in the fourth quarter, I mean, in the fourth quarter you have a 73-yard drive, an 83-yard drive, both of them in less than two and a half minutes, eight plays and seven plays mm -hmm. for ten points. I mean, mm -hmm. it just really came together, and I thought the I thought the team showed a lot of poise. Well, I, I was just real proud of them. I really was. And, uh, not, we weren't perfect. Uh, we've talked about this. Uh, we're not going to be a great team. Uh, uh, we could be a very good team, but we can do great things, and that's what it's all about. Yeah. And, and, and a, a good team that does that works hard and gives great effort and makes great plays at the right time, they can be state champions. So knowing who you are is a big deal. And uh, we know who we are. Uh, we, see, we know where we got strengths. We know where we got weaknesses. Like today's practice, man, it was really pinpoint on we got to get better here, 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 and here. And, man, we were driving it home, and the kids knew it, and they, and, and they knew they had to get fixed. And uh, so we got a, lot of, uh, got a lot of things done. And they always say uh, your first couple games um, – or when you make your most improvement, your right. biggest moves. And, yeah. and we were used to uh, what we call, what I like to call the plants, sort of what we've did everywhere we've been together uh, in different places. We always felt that coming into the season, we were close to at least being in mid-season form. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think we were there yet, but we're hoping to be at mid-season form much quicker than a lot of teams. We look for the next couple of weeks for us to, be, uh, to really be you know, making steps, making strides. You mentioned Josh. I thought I thought Josh played very well. Ten of thirteen, 194 yards. He had a 33-yard touchdown pass to Sam mm -hmm. Letton. 
but he made some big throws. He had the big mm -hmm. throw to Cole Watts, the 60-yarder, in the mm -hmm. fourth quarter. Um, I, I thought for his first start in the second half, you wouldn't have really known just watching from the stands that I'm watching a young man having his first start. Well, there was a lot of things going on around him, too. I mean, we were, we were moving, we were jumping, we were, you know, making a wrong step here or a wrong step there. And, uh, you know, that could, as a quarterback, that can really shake you. Mm -hmm. And uh, so everybody didn't freak, and I was really, really proud of him. You know, he, uh, you know, snaps sometimes might not be where they're supposed to be, a little bitty things, but everybody was fighting. Everybody's coming to the sideline. And I'll tell you something else, too, and that's sort of something we do. I thought we were really focused on our sidelines, and I think that's a really big deal. Uh, if you'll notice, you don't see a whole lot of cheerleading on our sidelines because when our offense is on the field, our defense, they don't move. Even, even with a guy that's going both ways, he's going to sit there. That's why we've got headphones, and we right. spend this big money on headphones so we can get them from there, rest them up. But they're constantly being fed information, and we hope to improve on that. And I think that's a big deal, and I think that helped our kids because they stay completely focused on offense if you're an offensive guy, defense if you're a yep. defensive guy. And I also think it helped our kids that went both ways. Yeah, yeah. Um, KK, you mentioned had a great, had another great day, 168 yards on 32 carries. Um, I thought Letton looked good with four touchdowns, uh, four catches and a touchdown. Mm -hmm. But coach, your defense pitched a shutout. I mean, we yes, gave they up, did. We, we gave up two touchdowns on on, on special teams, mm -hmm. but your defense came to play it in the and in the fourth quarter. They gave up that big play, but they were resilient down the down the uh, stretch and kept them out of the end zone. Well, uh, Stu did a great job. We talked through the week, and uh, we had sort of been talking a little bit before that, some scheme stuff that we wanted to do, where we wanted to get to be. And, uh, you know, I get a lot of credit on defense uh, from north, but, uh, you know, our defense is – we always felt if we could hold somebody to two, uh, two touchdowns or less, it's pretty common sense. You always look in the state finals. You always look at the, uh, the defenses there. And when you're giving up ten or less – you're really, really good, and you're yeah. probably in the state sure. championship. Absolutely. So if we can hold them around two, that's sort of the, the, the theory. And we want to, uh, we want to try to uh, uh, um, move quarterbacks, uh, get some quarterback touches, and uh, keep the, guy, the trigger guy moving around. And uh, Stu did a great job of mixing things up, but it really looked the same, I felt, a lot, mm -hmm. and, uh, so, which is, uh, you know, that, that quarterback looks up there, he sees the same thing pretty much every time, but right. it's, it's something different. And they... Uh, the guys really played hard. They really did, and uh, we've got some deficiencies there. And we uh, so he's he's doing things that help gives us a chance and gives the kids a chance. Yep. Yep. Well, I mean, you uh, you held them to 266 yards of total offense. Uh, the Raiders had 383. Uh, Ryan Rogie was your leading tackler, but I thought early on in the game, a couple of you know big hits, hard hits, mm -hmm. kind of set set the tone. Um, and as we said, you know, the defense pitched the shutout. Now. Kind of on the negative side, penalties. Uh, yeah, 14 well. penalties, 147 yards, and uh, I mean, I know as a head coach that must have been driving you a little nuts there uh, well, for a while. That happens. That's going to happen in the first games. Everybody knows that. But it also happens, uh, like I said, when you have those big, uh, you have those big uh, scrimmage games. That, that that's why you want to play those games up yep. as a game. So instead of having a glorified practice and then playing a game, we want to play a game and then go into that second game. So. Uh, that that happens if you you know if you the Corky Kale games uh, that I've always been to all day long. There's always a lot of whistles. Yeah. There's always a lot of whistles. And uh, and watching that this week, and I saw a lot of the same stuff. And uh, I think we because one we've got one advantage that we've got to use. You know we've got kids that uh, they, they live uh, a lot of kids dip, discipline uh, goal oriented uh, homes. They come to a very disciplined school that is treats you like an adult and expects you to be an adult. Right and uh, from freshman all the way up, and uh, they give you the opportunity to make right decisions, and uh, that, that, that's a good thing, and, and we could try to carry that over into the football, the, the football program, and we got some mature kids, and uh, uh, it's refreshing. Uh, I can just take care of myself from freaking out, because sometimes they've got Sully and those guys, they, 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 they've got it, they've got it, so, uh, uh, and it's important to them. I, there was a couple times uh, you know, you just look out there and you see a kid that you know, he missed a tackle or he missed a block, and you could just tell they had big. I mean, no kid wants to do that, but they just they were like, "I got this. That won't happen again." So, yeah. well, accountability is a big thing. Yeah, being accountable is, is a big thing. Um, okay, the block punts. Now, 
you kind of step back from that. I mean, you know, Chris had the two punts blocked. He was kind of unlucky. Both of them roll into the end zone right onto the, you know, right onto the ground of right. a South Gwinnett player. It doesn't happen a lot. But at the same time, you, know, you talk about Chris. He comes back and hits the field goal to win the game. Yeah. And he didn't let the negatives kind of take away from what was the most important moment, which is, I've got to put this ball through the punt. We had a, first of all, he had a couple great punts. His first punt was oh. incredible. Oh, yeah, was and and we yards, and we yeah. had a personal foul right. that we've talked about. Uh, you know, uh, leading up to the games, you can't be this way, whatever. We had a personal foul, brought it back. He still had a good one. Yep. He had another real good punt, and then he he made the he made the right uh, he made the right read on the fake, and that was huge. That was huge early in the game. Uh, I. I I don't know if we scored on that. We may have scored. I, mean, I can't remember, but but we should have. It, yeah. it, it was a great it was a great thing. And uh, of course, then he comes back and he kicks the he kicks. Uh, he, I think we uh, I I don't remember how many we kicked in the end zone, but uh, he kicked it deep every time. He did. And uh, of course, he kicked that. I mean, he just hit that th that that field goal, and it was just it was really cool. <laughs> it was good. It was good. So we're gonna take a break and come back and talk to you about the Marietta game coming up this Friday night. But first, a word from Zaxby's. Zaxby's indescribably good. And welcome back to the Coach Mo Dixon Show as the Raiders get ready to head to Marietta in North Pitt Stadium and play the Marietta Blue Devils. And Coach, um, we were talking a little bit before the show, you've never you know, played a game at Northcutt. It's not far from where you live right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. So you've got a short commute. <laughs> just right down the street. Just right down the street. But um, I know you, you've been watching film since the day you got here and you've been uh, planning for Marietta. Uh, they, got, they got hit pretty hard on Friday night, uh, mm -hmm. took a pretty, pretty, pretty tough loss to, to Etowah, but what are the, some of the things that you've got the, the Raiders focusing on to get prepared for the Blue Devils? Well, first of all, playing at Northcutt, it, you know, it's a legendary place. And, uh, you know, all the fans, they're right on top of you. They are. Good or bad, they're, they're right there, right on the sideline. And uh, so it's, uh, from what I understand, real noisy. And, uh, of course, playing in the Dome, you know how that sort of is. But now it'll, uh, that's pretty cool in itself. And that's definitely an advantage. It's one of those uh, places that is an advantage for a home team. Um, again, um, we, um, I think that was a game that uh, they probably were looking to be very competitive in. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, sometimes in high school ball, it, uh, momentum gets going one way, it's hard to stop. And um, so that thing definitely went a different way. And uh, I'm sure right now, you know, they sort of went back to the drawing board. And as a, as a, uh, as a pro, you know, uh, Coach Burton is, a, is an outstanding coach, coached at the uh, University of, uh, of Richmond and uh, won national championship there as an assistant, and uh, he knows how to handle that. With a Walton running back, we might add. Ah, I didn't Justin know that. Justin Forte. Oh, all right, yeah. And so anyhow, uh, of course he did. And uh, so he's going he's gonna to get everything. He's going he's gonna to have him in the right direction. But I'd say those kids are pretty much going to be uh, – they're going to be in a, a, a very aggressive mood uh, for, the, for uh, our Walton football program to come in there. So we'll be running to a buzzsaw. And, uh, of course, we've, we, we started working on them today. And they got an outstanding running back. I think he was a 100-meter champ in the state last year. Mm -hmm. a strong kid. And then uh, their quarterback is very elusive, a great athlete. They've got athletes all over the field. They're a lot like South. Uh, you know, South was uh, very good. Had a lot of good athletes too. Right, right. They got a good, great uh, tradition there. They got the town of Marietta, who, uh, you know, being down that in that area, they had a couple really big things last week. Uh, a big uh, um, tailgate party that they had for all their fans. Had a huge turnout, and uh, so they're excited about it. Coach Burton's got that going. I know they've had a lot of additions to their school, and and it's a like a new era there type of thing. And uh, so it's it's we're going into a place that is uh, they're very upset about last week and and we're the we we're invited to the party this week. <laughs> well, but but I mean, as you, you, I mean, you're you're head coach, you're competitive. Don't you love going to places like that? I mean, no one likes to go to a place where it's dead. I mean, you want to go where it kind of. I mean, I know you like to take care of your business, but it, right. I mean, I think the team. I, it's it's fun to go into the the tough places and win. 
Well, you, you, you can't be, uh, you can't come from the staff I've been on, Bob Spire, yep. and not like to go into the den of the devil. He'd yep. talk about it all the time, den of the devil. But that's, that's sort of what you do. It's, it's one of those games that, uh, that you find out what you're made out of. You know, we've right. talked about the, uh, we beat the dead horse about the, uh, um, no pun intended on that story, by the way, uh, <laughs> But, about but the see, scrimmage, they, they don't know yeah, that story. The, the scrimmage <laughs> game, but now this is that big game. Now this is the type of game that you, you, you you're going to find out. We'll find out what we're made of. Now yeah. we're going into sure. enemy territory, and uh, it's uh, it's going to be hostile. And uh, they got a good program, and he he's got a great staff. Those guys are they're they're big time uh, class uh, uh, staff. So we've got to work that out for us. And I believe also at the game they're going to be doing, they're going to be honoring veterans this weekend. Yes. It's Labor Day weekend, but also at, 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 at North Cup they'll be doing that. So Yeah, to uh, Coach uh, Burton's credit there from, uh, we met uh, at the uh, um, Cobb County uh, kickoff, kickoff yeah. luncheon, and uh, he, he uh, let me know that they were going to try to do a uh, military appreciation, and he invited anyone in the Walton community with ties to the military uh, and anybody that we would like to have recognized from our community uh, to contact us, let us know, and we would like for them. We'd love for them to come to the Marietta game on Friday, Good. and uh, we will uh, we will have it uh, to where they can be uh, they can be honored there at that game. And uh, I think that's a really cool thing for Marietta High to be doing that. And uh, I think it was really neat for them to make sure that they wanted us included in on it too. No, that's so, good. That is. so he's uh, their class act, and uh, you know it's going to be a, a tough fought ball game, but it's it's pretty cool. It's a Cobb County in the area that I know they're an independent city school, but but they are still part of our community in this area, and uh, it's going to be a really neat thing. Well, and those rivalries with, with Marietta go back all the way to the days of Eric Zire, and mm -hmm. um, you know, so th there's there's a lot of tradition between the schools. They've always tried to manage to play each other, mm -hmm. um, even when they're not not in region. So, Coach, uh, one last question. I mean, it, it, it's not about your favorite rock band or anything like that, but if you had to kind of boil it down to what's the kind of the number one improvement that you're looking for from your team between. South Gwinnett last week and Marietta this week. What what what, what would that be? Well, we definitely want to cut out the penalties. Right. And we want uh, um, want pace. Uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? We want tempo. Tempo. Yeah, we want tempo, our tempo yeah. to be not as choppy, which comes from the penalties. Right. And uh, uh, that's that's pretty much what we want. We want the tempo on both sides. We feel we're a tempo team on defense, and uh, we definitely want to get uh, get better at that on both sides. And uh, we definitely don't want what happened on the special teams there with the uh, uh, with, with the uh, block punts that type of thing. And we want we want to be uh, we want to play very confident. And uh, and I think we will. I, I think we're going to have a good week of practice. We had a good talk to, about that today. Uh, of course, we got JV games this week on Thursday, right. yep. and uh, I think we're on the road. Freshman game. I'm not sure. I should know that. But one game's here. One game's on the road against Etowah, mm -hmm. and uh, if you are uh, if you can travel to the game at Etowah, that's good, and if you can stay here for the game, that'd be good too. And uh, So we've got a real week of school uh, of football with school, so we got the whole program's playing Thursday and Friday, yep. and uh, we'll see what we're made out of, and uh, we sort of practiced that way today. Our freshmen actually scrimmaged our JV, and uh, they, got the, they got a lot of work done today, so it's a big week for us. I'm looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, it's on, it's fun time, and uh, not as much sleep, not as much uh, everybody's got to just keep showing up, and, and it's the fun time, you know, and it's all about the prep now. It's all about the prep and uh, people keeping their best players on the field and the young guys getting better and getting better and then, uh, you know, getting shot, getting those playoffs, and then that's what it's all about. Well, the Raiders started off 1-0 with the exciting uh, victory over the Comets on Friday night and take it on the road to Marietta uh, this coming Friday night. Okay, so here we go. The traffic, it, traffic's tough. Parking's kind of tough. So game 7:30. Leave a little bit of time. A lot of good places to eat in Marietta. Absolutely. Um, so you know you might want to kind of make a bit of a late afternoon and evening of it before you head over to the stadium to see the Raiders play. And then we will see you back here with our Labor Day edition of because I'm sure you're laboring on Labor Day, aren't you? Yeah, we're working, man. That's Big game love. next week. Yeah. But uh, I'll tell you what, we had a great another thing. We had a really great uh, turnout for the game, and yes, I think I think that would be unbelievable for just to follow that up we had a, we had a killer uh, pep rally i mean it was one of the coolest things i've ever been to on friday morning miss mcneil she just said mo we're going to have a, a pep rally and i think you're going to like it because the kids are they get involved and man it was neat of course i got water dumped on me that's another story but i think it'd be really cool to take that same thing to marietta 
and let's see how many uh, walk people we can fit in that and have a big time. Exactly. So we'll see all of you there on Friday night against the Blue Devils, and we'll catch up with you a week from now. Bo Dixon Show. This was edition number two brought to you by Zaxby's. Hey, we're 1-0. The roll begins. We'll see you next week.